everything is inspired by the teachings of the divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, who's the founder of Charya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Om Agana Dimananda Syagana Sadaka Chaksurin Militam Yanatashma Yishi Gurevayama Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stavitam Yanabhutane Sayam Rupakaramayam Daradiswa Parantikam I'd like to talk today about the geography of our lives. I hate to break it to you. Hollywood would have you believe otherwise, but you cannot live your whole life on the mountaintop. <laughs> Most of our life is actually spent down in the dark valleys of life. Why is that? Krishna, God, knows that all sunshine and no rain, what have you got? A desert, parched, dry. You can't always live on the mountaintops. You can't always be in the sunshine, which is to say you can't always have everything coming up roses. You can't have everything going your way on your timetable because if you do, you're never going to grow up. We'll never reach the fullness of our destiny without the dark places, the valleys. Life in this material world is a mixture of sun-drenched mountaintops. You won the state championships, you aced your SATs, you got into the college of your choice, you married the girl. Few of them and far between. <laughs> Most of the rest of it is mountains, dark, gloomy, transitional waiting rooms, you might say. But here's the good news. Without the dark, there's no dawn. Without the dark, there's no beautiful sunset, no sunrise. Without the winter, without the snow, there's no spring, no summer. The geography of our lives is going to include valleys. There's nothing we can do about it. Valley of weeping. Valley of deep darkness. Valley of calamity. Valley of ill health. Valley of divorce. Valley of debt. Valley of loss. In a Back to Godhead article, which is the magazine of the Hare Krishna movement, a number of years ago, this appeared. So-called mentally healthy people, you can ask yourself, am I classified as a mentally healthy person? <laughs> because you won't like what comes after this. <laughs> <laughs> Prabhupada asked the question, who is crazy? And you'd be surprised at the answer. So-called mentally healthy people, now the language is a little highfalutin, so you have to pay attention, enhance their self-esteem by creating flattering illusions about themselves. They hypnotize themselves into thinking they can achieve permanent happiness through impermanent things. On the other hand, people that just some or other can't buy into the illusion of material happiness, they're labeled as depressives. There is considerable evidence that depression is marked not by unrealistic pessimism, but by depressive realism and the absence of illusion. Five facts about the valleys of life. They're inevitable, they're unpredictable, they're impartial, they're temporary, and they're purposeful. It is said that in the world you will have trouble. It doesn't say if you have trouble, it says you will have trouble. The question is not if you'll have trouble, the question is when will the trouble come? Like the caption says, if it's small and cute, it will inevitably pee in your hand. All of us are in one of three stages. You just come out of a valley, you're in a valley right now, or you're about to go into a valley. In life there are three D's, three S's, and three F's. Three D's are difficulty, disappointment, and discouragement. The three S's are suffering, sorrow, and sickness. And the three F's are frustration, failure, and fatigue. These things are going to happen. They're a normal part of life. Don't be surprised by it. Valleys are unpredictable, secondly. You can't plan them. You can't time them. You can't schedule them. They're always unexpected, as indicated 
in this image here of the bride having had a flat tire and a breakdown on a lonely road with nobody to help her on the way to her wedding. Would you agree with me that valleys always come at the worst time? I don't know if there's a good time, but they always seem to come at the absolutely worst time. Now, have you ever noticed how quickly a good day can become a bad day? August 6, 1945, people in Hiroshima, Japan, they got up to what they thought was just going to be another normal day. A phone call, a letter, a routine doctor's checkup, a freak accident. A few years ago, it was a sunny day in November. It was a holiday, Diwali, the new year. We were planning a big gathering in the evening. My Bobby wanted to do a little grass seeding down at the bottom of the hill. She had one of those roller things, just made of plastic. There was a bit of an incline. She lost her foot in. She landed on that uh, plastic grass seed spreader on her hip. And who would have thought it? When she got up that morning for Diwali, the furthest thing from her thoughts were that before midnight, that same night, she would have had a major surgery and a hip replacement. Who would have thought? Valleys are unpredictable. <laughs> Valleys are also, thirdly, impartial, just like rain. Rain falls on the land and the agricultural fields where it's needed, but it also falls in the ocean. Similarly, disaster is going to hit the just and the unjust. You don't get a pass just because you're serving the Lord. Krishna, God never promised that you wouldn't have dark valleys in your life, but he has promised that he'll never send a dark valley that he couldn't get us through. We just have to do our part. Trust him. Trust him even when we don't understand. Even when we don't understand, the key is to have a good attitude, keep moving forward, being good to people that aren't being good to us. Krishna, God, has a much bigger perspective than we do. Oh, why can't I get a job? Boo-hoo. Why can't we have a baby? Why can't I get married? Why did we get divorced? Why can't I get out of debt? Why can't I get healthy again? You think you're in an unfair situation? Lord Ram was the eldest son of King Dasarath. His whole life he was groomed to take over. His father decided to retire and announced that on the following morning, Ram would be king of the known world at that time. This is thousands and thousands of years ago. Ram went to sleep at night in silken sheets in the palace, being told that he was going to be anointed as the king in the morning. There was a palatial conspiracy during the night. By the time Ram woke up in the morning, he was sent off into the dark, dangerous forests for 14 years of exile amongst the cannibals. Who would have thought? So you think you have an unfair situation? Ram had much more of an unfair situation, but he bore it all with a smile, with a great attitude. And when he came back, having fulfilled all the terms of his exile, Krishna restored him twice what he had lost originally. It doesn't matter how good you are, nor does it matter how bad you are. Life in the material world is full of problems, trials, difficulties, disturbances, downtimes, and depression. None of that means that you're a bad person. Don't take it personally. All it means is that you're a person. <laughs> Why me? Can I turn that around and ask, why not you? Do you think you should be the only one in the whole universe who's never had a tragedy, never had a loss? Do you think you should be the only one who never grows up, who never gets out of the bathing pool, who never learns how to swim? <laughs> Imagine a little seed underground saying, it's dark down here. It's depressing down here. It's hot. It's lonely down here. It's limiting down here. It's claustrophobic down here. And yet, can I tell you that being in the dark is necessary to germinate, to get the nourishment, the warmth, the resolve, the strength to burst up, 
from the dark into the light to fructify and produce abundant fruits which the seed itself could never have imagined. Darkness is required to get the seed to become the tree that it was meant to be. Four, valleys are temporary. We go through the valley, don't we? We don't stay there our entire lives. Valley is a circumstance. It's a situation. It has a season to it. This is the four-headed Lord Brahma, who's the creator of the universe. He lives as long as the universe lasts. It's explained. Sahasra Yuga Pariyantamaharya Brahmano Vidu. One day of Brahma is a cycle of four yugas, four cosmic seasons, the total of which is 4,300,000 years times 1,000. One day of Brahma is 4,300,000 times 1,000. His 24 hours, day and night, is that figure times two. His week is times seven. His month is times four. His year is times 12. And he lives for 100 years. Just for your own information, our Lord Brahma is about 55 right now. But when he comes to the end of his life, he says, how has it gone so quickly? Valleys are temporary. Share a poem with you. Once in India reigned a king. Maybe you can say the refrain with me so we'll get this idea deep down in our spirit. Once in India reigned a king who upon his signet ring engraved a maxim true and wise which have held before the eyes. Gave him counsel at a glance fit for every change and chance. Solemn words and these were they. Even this will pass away. Say even this this will pass pass away. Trains of camels through the sands brought him gems from Samarkand, fleets of galleys through the seas brought him pearls to match with these, but he counted not his gain. Treasures of the mine and main, wealth will come but not to stay, even this will pass away. In the revels of the court at the zenith of the sport, when the palms of all his guests burned with clapping at his jest, said the king amid his figs and wine, O loving friends of mine, pleasure comes but not to stay, even this will pass away. Fairest lady ever seen, he made his bride and crowned his queen. Pillied on the marriage bed, whispering to his soul, he said, Bridegroom never pressed fair bosom to his breast, but mortal flesh will come to clay. Even this will pass away. Fighting on a furious field, once a javelin pierced his shield. The soldiers would allow the man bore him bleeding to his tent, groaning from his tortured side. Pain is hard to bear, he cried, but with patience day by day, even this will pass away. Towered in the public square, 20 cubits in the air, stood his statue, carved in stone, then the king disguised on loan. Stood before his sculptured name, musing meekly, what is fame? Fame is but a slow decay, even this will pass away. Struck with palsy, wise and old, waiting at the gates of gold, said the king with his dying breath, life is done, but what is death? And then in answer to the king, fell a sunbeam on his ring, showing by a heavenly ray, even this will pass away. This is from the Krishna book. Sisupal had an impossible crush on Rukmini. He didn't realize that Rukmini is, is Radha in another incarnation, the eternal consort of Krishna. It's like, forget it, Sisupal. But he's, he, still, he still had this impossible crush on Rukmini. At the last minute, just before Sisupal thought he was going to be united with Rukmini in marriage, Krishna came by, put Rukmini in his chariot, Whisked her off to his kingdom. Sisupal was like literally standing there at the altar crying, Oh, poor me, poor me. And his friend, Jarasandra, who interestingly enough was a demon, and yet he's speaking really good philosophy here about the temporality of valleys. His friend Jarasandra says to Sisupal, Oh, Sisupal, tiger among men, <laughs> give up your depression. After all, embodied beings, happiness and unhappiness is never permanent. Just as a puppet dances by the desire of the puppeteer, so the world, controlled by the Supreme Lord, struggles in both happiness and misery. And then Jarasandha is going to tell a little bit of his story. He says, in battle with Krishna, I and my armies lost 17 times. (laughs) Only once did I defeat him. But still, I never lament or rejoice because I know this world is driven by time and fate. 
Now our enemies have conquered because time favors them. But in the future, when the time is auspicious for us, we will conquer. Oftentimes you go through a valley and you think it's a dead end. It's a blockage. But it's not. Valleys are just like tunnels. There's a beginning. And just as there's a beginning, there's also an end. All you have to do is just get through the tunnel and eventually you're out of it and back in the light again. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 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 Hare Hare. It is said there's a wonderful joy ahead of us if we keep God first place. Even though the going may be rough for a while down here. Even if it's your whole life, 60 or 70 years, it's just temporary compared to the glory of eternity. It is said our troubles are short-lived, but there is an eternal glory which outweighs them all. It is also said if you look at the world, you'll be distressed. If you look within, you'll be depressed. But if you look at Krishna, you'll be at rest. It's our choice. Turn your eyes upon the beautiful form of Krishna. Look full into his wonderful face and the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Prabhupada said, no one should be depressed thinking that he will never get out of the clutches of matter. When you think about anything that's bothering you, whether it be politics at the office or an ability to have a child or relational difficulty or you're not making enough income, what's the problem? What's the basic root problem? Someone comes up to you. You're all down in the dumps. They put their arm around you and they say, Don, what's the matter? That's the problem. Matter, isn't it? So we need to get out of the clutches of matter and all of our problems will be solved. There is every possibility that Krishna will deliver those who call out his name. Just as it's possible for a log which is floating down the river eventually to catch up and get snagged on the bank of the river. We can execute devotional service, Krishna consciousness to the Lord with every hope of being saved. In case you are starting to get depressed by the first part of the lecture, now we're lightening up here, okay? We can serve the Lord, we can chant Hare Krishna with every hope of being rescued from the material world. Not because of who we are or what we can do, but because of who He is and what He can do for His devotees. Lastly, fifth, The valleys are purposeful. Whether it's a valley of doubt or depression, despair, discouragement, or defeat, there is a divine reason behind it. It's not an accident. It happens to prove your faith. Valleys are not just a freak of nature. Krishna wants to build your faith in the valleys of life. When life knocks you down onto your knees, guess what? On your knees is a perfect position to pray to the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. We all love to be on the mountaintops, but the problem is you don't build faith. You don't build character on the mountaintops because when things are going fine, then we don't think of God. We don't need God. When you don't feel like trusting when you don't feel like serving Krishna, when you don't feel like praising Krishna, those are the times that your faith is tested. Immature people wait for the feelings to come before they act. Many of them end up waiting their whole lives, saying, well, I just don't feel like it today. On the other hand, spiritually mature persons act on behalf of the Lord No matter how they are feeling, they don't wait to see how they feel before they act. They act their way into the feeling. Arjuna did not feel like fighting at Kurukshetra, but he did it 
anyway because Krishna asked him to. Krishna wants to mature you. Krishna wants to build your spiritual muscles. Every problem has a purpose. Even the little tiny aggravating inconsequential ones, traffic jams, politics at the office, kids acting up, the things that seem like they're just mere irritations, even they have a purpose. Now you might ask, why couldn't life down here be full of more sun-drenched mountaintops? The answer is that this world is not your real home. The discomforts of this world are meant to increase our hankering for the real world, the world where matter is conspicuous by its absence, where everything, the trees, the houses, the buildings, the rivers, the birds, the animals, are eternal, have imperishable, deathless spiritual bodies. And when you honor the Lord down here, even when you're in the valleys, the dark place, you're passing the test. Krishna is building your character, making you eligible for eternal life. Bottom line, Krishna is more interested in your character than in your comfort, more interested in your holiness than in your happiness. Happiness, after all, comes from holiness anyway. In 1972, we had just acquired some property in India, in Vrindavan. Vrindavan is a holy place. About 50,000 people lived there at the time. There were 5,000 temples. It's a place where Lord Krishna enacted his pastimes 5,000 years ago, kind of like our Bethlehem. The property that had been donated was way out in the sticks. It's nothing but jungles, snakes, even wild animals and thieves and robbers. So one of Prabhupada's disciples, Guru Das, was living out there amongst the snakes and the scorpions with no good water, mosquitoes and everything. He was supposed to be gathering building materials and organizing the excavation for what was eventually become a beautiful, beautiful temple. But coming from a pampered, middle-class American life, he was having a lot of trouble. He wrote to Prabhupada, he said, I don't know if I can stick this out. Prabhupada wrote him back in 1972. Do not be depressed. All along, my God brothers gave me only depression, repression, compression but I continued strong in my duty. So never mind, there is some discouragement. Continue with your work in full, enthusiastic, Krishna conscious attitude of service. In 1989, one of Prabhupada's disciples wrote a special offering to him on his appearance day. He passed away in 77, but still every year we write something appreciative. So this is what he said. Srila Prabhupada was always deeply absorbed in his relationship with his guru, who's pictured here, Bhakti Siddhanta, and Krishna. He would never become sentimental about temporary things. He displayed all kinds of emotion. Imagine a spiritual leader exhibiting the full range of emotions. It's not what we stereotype, is it? It's not what we imagine. But it's said here that Prabhupada was not emotionalist. He was full of strong emotions from soft tender empathy to hard, blazing anger on occasion. In fact, the devotee writes that he exhibited a much wider range of emotions than anybody they'd ever met. He taught that even depression can be an impetus to render more sincere service, which in turn becomes a source of spiritual inspiration and bless. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna, Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama, Hari Hari. Finishing up here with a question. What do you do in the dark valleys of life? One, refuse to be discouraged. Two, remember that God is always with you. Three, rely always on Krishna's protection and guidance. Four, know that God's intelligence is beyond my ability to understand it. Five, however bad appearances may be, he's always working for my good. Like the seed, what appears to push you down is meant to thrust you forward. What appears to starve you is actually meant to nourish you. What appears to depress you is meant to grow you. What appears to hold you back is meant to push you upward into the light. What appears to stunt you is meant to produce in you the fruits of peace, joy, prosperity, kindness, love, 
purposefulness and fulfillment in this life and next life take you back to home, back to God. Thanks for your kind attention. If any part of this message resonates with you, put your hands up in the air and say right along with me, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.